Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to the Reignited Prayer Call. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Shalanda. Good morning, good morning, Nina. Good morning, guys. Come on, singers, come on. Good morning, good morning. Hey, honey. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Welcome to the Reignited Prayer Call. Happy Monday. I hope you all had a wonderful weekend, a restful weekend. God has given me a word on today. We won't be here long today. I don't have that many notes, but it is a word from the Lord. Come on in. Hello, Marissa. Hello, honey. Good morning and happy Monday. Happy Monday. Good morning. Good morning, Jackie. Good morning. Welcome and thanks for joining us this morning on the Reignited Prayer Call. Good morning. We're going to get started shortly in just a couple of more minutes. Welcome to the Reignited Guest. Yes, he is, Jackie. He is awesome. Yes. Good morning, Katrina. A living sacrifice. Nothing like starting your morning off with worship and praise, devotion and prayer. It just seems like it sets the whole pace and the whole tone of your day. Even when something tries to come up against you throughout the day, you'll just remember the prayer. You'll remember the devotion on this morning. You'll remember the worship. And you won't even get to be able to take it with a grain of salt and keep it pushing. Good morning, Pamela. Good morning, First Lady Renee. Hey, sis. Good morning, Missy. Good morning. Good morning, Mama. Good morning. My mama is on the line this morning. We're going to give it one more minute and then we are going to get started. Good morning and welcome to the Reignited Prayer Call. For those that are on the line, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Yes. We give God everything that we have. Everything. Oh, 
All right, let's go ahead and let's get started. With good affirm- absolutely, you got to start today with affirmations and declarations and speak life over yourself all day long. It's so important. Well, good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Reignited Prayer Call. Happy Monday. Oh, y'all, let me turn this TV off in the background. Hold on one second. All right. Amen. We want as less distractions as possible as we're doing our call. And we're just going to move on as the Lord has given us. Dear most gracious Father, Lord, we just thank you on today, Lord God. We thank you, God, for waking us up another day, Lord God. We thank you for being in our right minds, having our health, our strength, Lord God, fighting our families, doing okay on this morning, oh God. Lord God, we ask that you just Cease all distractions, oh God, so that we can focus on you this morning as we're giving you the first fruits of our day, the first few minutes of our day, Lord God, to worship you, to praise you, to receive a word from you that will take us throughout today. Lord, we just thank you, we praise you, and we give you all the honor, the glory, and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Well, welcome to the Reignited Prayer Call. I am your intercessory host today, Miss Jackie Morrison. I am glad that you decided to be with us on today. Oh, thank you, Tammy, honey. This is something real new, girl. Real, real new. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I hope this is going to work because um, this all I got today. <laughs> it's been a long weekend. So anyhow, welcome to the Reignited Prayer Call. For those of you who are on this morning and it's going to go on the replay on today, I praise and thank God for each and every one of you. So we're going to just jump right in this morning and um, we're coming out of 1 Kings, 1 Kings chapter 3, verses 16 through 28. And the Lord had gave this to me about, I think, the week before last, uh, Wednesday before last, during my fasting time. It's so important that we fast. I don't know if you guys fast, but I have a standing weekly day um, that I do a 24-hour fast every single week. Um, it's so important that you guys fast and get clarity. Um, good morning, Darice. Get clarity on what God um, wants from you, getting closer to God and just being in God's presence. And so anyhow, he gave me this story. And I'm like, Lord, why are you giving me this story? And sometimes he'll give you something, but you really don't understand it right away. So you just make sure you write it down. I always talk about writing stuff down in your journal, jotting things down, putting it in your phone, because you will never know when you're going to go back to it or when he's going to give you the revelation for that thing. And so on my way home last night from California, God gave me the revelation on, um, on this passage, on this passage of scripture. And so I know a lot of you have children. You guys know I have uh, plenty of children, a lot of children, (laughs) six to be exact. Um, Of course, we have four grown children now, thank God, and we have two still under the age. But I remember when my kids were younger, um, and we had about, I think, four in the house. I even had five at one time in the house. But anyway, um, they always fought over the the charger cords for the phones you know your 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 apple phone charger cord or your you know the the earphones because they all look the same you know when they first came out they were all just white you know white cords everybody had a white cord and and you know the kids would go and they would you know take each other's cords and then they'll be arguing i can hear them arguing in the other room over the cord and i'm like lord jesus you know i need them to get it together and so eventually After them arguing over the court of who court it is, here they come. And you can hear them walking down the hallway because they're still arguing and they're coming on in. And and then, Mama, this is my court. No, it's my court. It's my court. I know this is my court, you know, and they arguing over this white court. And so, you know, I tell y'all need to just figure this thing out. And even after a few more minutes, a few more minutes go by, they just start getting on your nerves. And so finally, I just say, you know what? Um, Listen. If y'all can't figure this out, ain't neither one of y'all gonna have a cord. I'm, I'm gonna take the cord and the cord gonna be mine. Nobody gonna have the cord. And if y'all don't stop arguing, you're gonna get it, right? Because <laughs> you're getting on my nerves now, right? And so eventually, what normally would happen is the persons who cord it really was would say, you know what, you can just have the cord. You can have the cord, forget it, you know? And they would just, they would, they would, in some sense, kind of give up. 
But then at that point, I knew it was their cord because they didn't want to get in trouble behind the cord. And so I would eventually, you know, I would give them the cord because I knew whose it was. And then I would, of course, go find another cord for the other child. And so that's just like this story that we're going to read on today coming from 1 Kings 3, 16 through through, uh, 28. And it says, sometime later, two prostitutes came to the king to have an argument settled. Please, my Lord, one of them began, this woman and I live in the same house. I gave birth to a baby while she was with me in the house. Three days later, this woman also had a baby. We were alone. There were only two of us in the house, but her baby died during the night when she rolled over on it. Then she got up in the night and took my son from beside me while I was asleep. She laid her dead child in my arms and took mine to sleep beside her. And in the morning when I tried to nurse my son, he was dead. But when I looked more closely in the morning light, I saw that it wasn't my son at all. Then the other woman interrupted, It certainly was your son, and the living child is mine. No, the first woman said, the living child is mine, and the dead one is yours. And so they argued back and forth before the king. Then the king said, let's get the facts straight. Both of you claim the living child is yours and says that the dead one belongs to the other. All right, bring me a sword. So a sword was brought to the king. Then he said, cut the living child in two and give half to one woman and the and, and half to the other. Then the woman who was the real mother of the living child and who loved him very much cried out, oh no, my Lord, give her the child. Please don't kill him. But the other woman said, all right, He will be neither yours nor mine. Divide him between us. Then the king said, do not kill the child, but give him to the woman who wants him to live, for she is the mother. She is his mother. Amen. And so have you ever felt that way before, like you keep fighting over something, you keep fighting over something and you just get so tired of fighting over it. And so, you know what? You just say, you can just have it, just take it, whatever it is, whatever it is, just, just, I'm just tired of fighting over it. And so in verse 20, it states, Then she got up in the night and took my son from beside me while I was asleep. And she laid her dead child in my arms and took mine to took mine to sleep beside her. And that's exactly what the enemy wants you to think that your dream is dead. That very thing that you're fighting over, the enemy wants you to think that that thing is dead. And so he'll come in and he'll steal it because you think that it's dead, that you can't nourish it or release it so that you can't nourish it or release it to the world. Okay. And a lot of us have those babies. We have those things that God has said, okay, you know what? I'm going to give you this dream. I'm going to give you this vision. I'm going to give you this thing. And I want you to, to nourish it and raise it and release it to the world. But the enemy is steadily trying to come up against it and steal it. And he wants you to think, you know what? Mm Mm-mm. That thing is dead. It's not alive. And he wants to steal it from you because the enemy knows that if it gets released, how powerful it's going to be, how wonderful it's going to be, how how it's going to, to make you who you are, the promise that God gave you. And so a lot of times we can be so sleep 
we can be so sleep, you know, and, and, and to that to that very thing that will allow the enemy to come in and steal it from us. I know you guys have heard the saying, stay woke. We got to stay woke. And that's how it is sometimes. Y'all remember when y'all had that newborn baby? And I know me, when I, each one of my babies that I had, there was times where I just couldn't sleep because I would sit there and I would look at my baby. And I'm like, dang, that's my baby. That's that, you know, I had this baby. And then I wanted to make sure that the baby was breathing every five minutes i'm looking over to make sure the baby was breathing so i could barely sleep but this woman was probably tired you know how we, we we're up all night we're feeding we're not getting any rest you know with that newborn baby so she was probably in a dead deep sleep and while she was in that dead deep sleep that's when the enemy this other woman tried to come and steal her baby and that's exactly what the enemy does to us he tries to catch us off guard when we're not paying attention and he tries to steal our joy. He tries to steal our peace. He tries to steal the little bit of hope that we have. And so in verse 22, it says, then the other woman interrupted. It certainly was your son. And she said that the living child is mine. And so have you ever felt just like so much persecution is happening in your life? Like darts are just being thrown to you every which way. And, and you're trying not to retaliate. You're trying not to re act but you you know you're trying not to get revenge you've been on attack and someone's been trying to make a lot out of you you know you 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 just getting things people are talking about you they're saying things they're they're lying on you and you want to get revenge but then you just get tired you get tired of fighting you get tired of trying to prove yourself you know people are trying to make a lot out of you just like this woman was trying to make a lot out of her and say that's not your baby but you know it's yours you know you had that baby and so the Lord knows your name. The Lord knows your heart. He knows what belongs to you. It don't matter how much you're trying to prove yourself or how much you're trying to, you know, make everybody know that, you know, this is who I really am. The Lord knows your name. He knows your heart. He knows what you're going to do. He knows what you're going to say. He knows exactly what's on the end side of you and he knows what belongs to you so you don't have to fight over anything you don't have to fight over anything what you are fighting over you don't have to you do, all you got to do is claim that it's yours and I, I, I yesterday as I was preparing this message the Lord he I heard in the spirit him say that you don't have to fight anymore. So I don't know who's on this call this morning that's fighting over something. They've been fighting over it. You've been fighting over it and fighting over it. But the Lord told me to tell you on today that you don't have to fight anymore. God is going to hand it over to you. It's yours. You don't have to fight any longer. It's yours. And so in verse 25, it says, then he said, cut the living child in two and get half to one woman and half to the other woman. My God, mm, Jesus. And so the blessing and the promise of God that he has for you, it won't be a partial blessing. God doesn't want to give you half of something. He wants to give it all to you. He wants to give you the full promise. So don't just accept anything less than the full blessing. And sometimes we've cheated ourselves, women. We've treated our we've cheated ourselves on the blessing that God has for us, right? Sometimes we've cheated ourselves and we've gone out and we've gotten a boyfriend that that only gave us half of what God said was for us, right? He well, you know what? I'm just going to settle for this little bit. He giving me a little bit, so it's okay. No, it's not okay. That's not okay. God wants to give you the full blessing, right? He doesn't want to partly give it to you, right? We don't want to just settle on anything. We don't want to just settle on, oh, well, it's a job. I'm just going to take it because at least it's a job. No, if God said you're going to have the business, you're going to have the business. And so you want the fullness of God, not just half of what God is trying to give you. And so you know, God just wants to give you the full blessing. So don't accept anything less. Don't accept just a partial blessing. I don't want just half of the thing. I want all of the thing, God. 
And so in verse 26, it says, then the woman who was the real mother of the living child and who loved him very much cried out, oh no, my Lord, give her the child, please do not kill him. And so sometimes we have to let go of the very thing that is so dear and precious to us. We just got to let go of it. You know, um, I, I've gone through some things with my children and y'all know your kids are very dear to you, but sometimes you got to just let them go. You got to let them go and, and you got to give them back to the Lord. You got to give it, give it back to God. Sometimes we've had jobs or we've had friendships that we had to let go of, but we just have to give it back to God. We just got to let go of it. And God is saying, don't worry about it. You just letting go temporarily. It's not going to last long. It's just a temporary thing. My God. He says, I'm going to give it back to you, but I, I but I, I need to see where your heart is. I need to see, do you really love this thing? I need to see if you really want to nourish this thing. I need to see if you're really going to take care of the very thing that I gave you. So I'm going to take it from you temporarily because I want to make sure that your eyes are on me and not just that thing. My God, it's just going to be a temporary thing. And so for some of you who've been fighting over that thing, you might have had to let go of it. But God said it's only temporary. It's only temporary. It won't last long. It won't be long. He's going to give it back to you. So don't worry about it because it's coming back. But during the time that that, that, that he has that thing, that, that, that the enemy is trying to steal that thing, make sure that you're keeping your eyes on me. And so you need to, you, will you, will you allow God to handle the thing for you? Will you allow, allow him to handle it for you? And will you, or will you intervene and try to continue to plead your case? You know how sometimes we just keep going on and on, just like your kids, they're trying to plead their case. And you like, boy, listen, go on somewhere. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take care of this already. You don't got to continue pleading your case because God is your judge. God is your lawyer. He is going to plead the case for you. And even though it might temporarily be gone, he's going to bring it back to you in the fullness. And, and I, I'm thinking about the scripture about the fullness of joy. He's going to give you the fullness of joy back. He's going to give you the fullness of peace back. It's just a temporary setback. Mm, my God, I don't know who that's for, but it's just a temporary setback. He's going to give it all back to you. And so the enemy nor people care about your baby. See, this other woman didn't care about her baby. She was willing to go ahead and cut this baby in half. She don't care. The enemy don't care about what God has given you. All the enemy knows is he wants it so that it can't be given out. So you can't go and minister to somebody else. So you can't go and testify to somebody else. So you can't go and witness to somebody else. They don't. The enemy doesn't care about your baby. People, so a lot of people don't care about your dreams. If they can't have it, if they can't have what what's yours, they, they don't want to see you have it, right? And so, you know, sometimes you have something and you you be look somebody will look at it and they want that thing. They don't care how they get it, but they just want it because they don't care about it. They just want what's yours and they don't want to see you have it. Well, if I can't have mine, you can't have yours. And that's what this woman was doing. She was saying, well, my baby died. And so since my baby died, I'm going to take yours and we're going to cut yours in half because if I can't have my baby, you can't have your baby but uh 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 no 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 it don't work like that it don't work like that what god has given you is for you it's your thing it's your blessing it's your baby it's your dream and so, you know, people don't want to see you happy. They don't care. They want to see your baby die. People will try to make you look like you're the villain. They'll try to make you look like you're the villain, like you're the one, you're the bad guy. You're the one that did this thing. And, and or, or they'll try to make it look like you're in the wrong for doing what's best. Have you ever been there before? You're doing what's best for yourself. You're doing what's best for your family. You're doing what's best, what you think is best, but people will try to make you feel like you're not. They'll try to make you feel like you're not doing your best. And so this woman said, you know what? Let her have the baby. Even though that was her baby, she was doing what's best for her baby because she loved that baby. But the, the woman didn't care about that. She just said, let's go ahead and cut this baby right in half. My God, my God. 
And so going on to verse 27, it says, then the king said, do not kill the child, but give him to the woman who wants him to live for she is his mother. And we know that Solomon was one of the wisest men in the Bible. He was one of the wisest men in the Bible. And he said, you know, he, he, he played this whole thing, this whole mind game with them. And so he knew that because that woman, the real mother, loved the baby so much that she didn't want to see him be, being cut in half. So at that point, he knew whose it was. Just like I tell my, if you, the two kids was arguing over something and you say, you know what, if y'all don't figure it out, both of y'all about to get it. And so the one whose it really is to say, you know what, they can go ahead and have it because I don't want to get in trouble. I don't want to be the one in trouble. And that's just like it is in this story. But because you are passionate, because you love your baby, because you know that God has given it, it to you, because you know that what you have will bless somebody else, what you have will bring people to salvation, because what you, what you have will make you a multimillionaire, well, what you have will make you your ministry successful, God will give it back to you. Just like he gave that baby back to this woman, God will give it back to you because you're passionate over it, because you know it's yours. You don't have to fight over it. You don't have to argue over it, but God knows it's yours. He knows it's yours. He says in Luke 1 and 45 that he will fulfill his promise to you. And he gave that lady back her baby. He gave it back. Her, he gave it, gave the baby back to her because he, God knew that, that, that she loved that baby. Just like you love your dream. Just like you love your vision. Even though if it's gone temporarily or it looks like it's not about to manifest. My sister Tish always talks about your dreams and everything being manifested in this season. Even if it doesn't look like it today, don't worry about it because it's only temporary. Tomorrow it can happen. The next minute it can happen. It can manifest itself. And in 2 Corinthians 4 and 17, 2 Corinthians 4 and 17, it says, in this small and temporary trouble we suffer will bring us a tremendous and eternal glory, which much greater than the trouble. It says, in this small and temporary trouble we suffer in. See, she suffered a small temporary trouble. Sometimes we, we feel like it's so big and it's, it's forever, but in God's eye, it's a small and temporary trouble that we're suffering. But that little trouble, that little suffering is going to bring us tremendous in eternal glory. The little suffering that we're suffering down here is going to be nothing when we get over on the other side. My God, when we make it through those gates, my God, and he says that you, well done, my good and faithful servant. You've been, you, you, you know, well done, my good and faithful servant. And that's what we want to hear at the end of the day, my God. And so I want to go back to verse 16. I know we kind of went backwards, but I want to go back to verse 16. I want to point something out here. It says in verse 16, it says sometime later, two prostitutes came to the king to have an argument settled. And I want to point the, the, the word prostitutes out to you because that tells me that just because of your occupation or your lifestyle, isn't lined up with God, he still will fulfill your promise and your purpose. My God, God still trusts you that you will love and care for your baby, that you will love and care for the thing that he gave you, that he gave you, even though your current situation or environment doesn't reflect that. So just because she was a prostitute, they were prostitutes, didn't mean that they were going to judge her any differently. Didn't mean that they were going to treat her any differently, that Solomon was going to treat her differently. But because that she still had that baby, she still loved that baby. We don't know why she was a prostitute. We don't know why these prostitutes were living in the house. All I know is that that prostitute that day had a baby. She had something that was on the inside of her. She was, she 
birthed this baby and she loved this baby. That was probably the only thing that she had that she loved. And God is telling you on this morning, women of God, that whatever that thing is, it doesn't matter what your situation looks like, what your environment looks like, what your occupation is, that he knows that you love that thing, that he's going to give it to you. It might be a temporary setback, but it's yours. It's yours. And, 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 we don't know what happened after this story, but I would assume that after she got that baby, I'm just par I'm just I'm just assuming something right now that maybe she cleaned up her life, that maybe things start to get a little bit better for her because she felt like, you know what, I got what I needed. I got my baby back. And so now I'm gonna get on the straight and narrow. And so even right now, if you're not on the straight and narrow, my God, if you're not on the straight and narrow, God will still give you that promise. He's still going to give you that purpose. He, he's still going to give you that very thing that you long for, that you love. It might be just a little bit of peace. It might be just a little bit of joy, but it might be that very thing to put you back on the road to success and not and, and, and get you out of your current situation. So God is saying to you this morning that it's already yours. It's already yours. In Galatians 6 and 9, it says, just don't get weary in well-doing. Justice will be served. My God, the baby is yours. The dream is yours. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. That was the word of the Lord on this morning. And prayerfully, I pray that you got something out of this word this morning. Don't give up on it. Don't give up on it. Justice is going to be served. Justice will be served. As the enemy is trying to come in and take your baby, don't worry about it. God is going to make sure that that baby is yours some way or another. All right? So God bless you on this morning. We're going to go into prayer. Dear most gracious Father, Lord, we just, we thank you, God. We thank you for giving us our babies, Lord God. You have given us dreams. You have given us books. You have given us businesses. You have given us ministries, Lord God. You have even given us emotional good health, Lord God, and, and mental good health, Lord God. Our babies, oh God, our joy, our peace, our babies, oh God. Even when the enemy tries to come up and steal our babies, oh God, we know that you're going to give us justice. We know that he might might steal it just for a minute, just like you said, that weeping may endure in, uh, 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 during the night, but joy comes in the morning. We know you're going to give it back to us, Lord God, because we love it, God. You gave it to us to nourish, oh God. You gave it to us to, to nourish so that it can grow, Lord God. And we know that we have a purpose in you, oh God. We have a promise in you, oh God, and that that very baby that's on the inside of us has to come out, Lord God, so that we can go and tell the world, oh God, so that we can go and tell somebody about you, oh God. God, so that we can tell them our story. We can testify uh, testify for you, Lord God, and that we can be a witness for you, oh God, Lord. We just love you and we praise you, God. We ask that you go throughout our day with us on today, oh God. Give us safe traveling grace and mercy, oh God. Mm, thank you, Jesus, Lord God. We just ask right now that even, oh God, even the one, the woman, my God, even the woman who says, I don't know, I don't have any more fight in me on today, Lord God. The woman that said, I don't have any more fight, Lord God. I need you to be the judge. I need you to be Solomon, Lord God, and give me back what's yours. God is saying, it's yours, my God, that you just have to open your mouth on this morning. Open your mouth on this morning and say that it's yours. Say that it's mine. It's mine. I don't have to fight over it any longer, my God. I don't know who that word is for but you got to open up your mouth on this morning and cry out to God and tell God that it's mine. It's mine. It's mine. My God. Lord, we just thank you, God. We praise you. Lord, we give you the honor. We give you the glory that's due unto your name, oh God. We thank you for all these things in your son Jesus' name, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you, God, so much for getting on this morning to the Reignited Prayer Call, and we'll see you back on here tomorrow morning at 5 30 a.m. Have a wonderful day.